Welcome to the podcast, Let the Prophet Speak. Today we are studying Amos, the Prophet, the Navi Amos, chapter 5b. Uh, this is the second portion <coughs> of chapter 5, starting from verse 16 until the end. We just studied together 5a, the first half of the chapter. And we finished off on the note that although the society was corrupt to the point where destruction was almost inevitable, almost reassured us, the prophet exhorted us to turn back to God, to seek out good, to turn away from evil, to hate evil and love good, and to establish true, real justice that's fair, um, and that maybe God will turn from his, his plan to destroy the nation. Um, and that's, we ended on that note that there still is hope, there still is a way to turn around. Now prior, when one leaves, we, the beginning of verse 15 was sin ura, hate evil, ehevu tov, and love good. First one must turn away from their evil ways and then turn towards good ways. In this next half of this chapter 5, Amos is going to first tell us we must show, in order to achieve this repentance and this return to God, we must first demonstrate how much we regret the bad and the evil ways that we were stuck in before. And that's how verse 16 and 17 begins with that regret. And then after that, he'll tell us then what one must do in order to demonstrate good. And that, that what, what one must do must not be uh, superficial and rote acts of prayer and sacrifice and song and, and ritual, but rather it should be justice and righteousness. Tzedek umishpat, established tzedek umishpat. This is the key to the return that Amos is prescribing for the nation. And that's what we're about to study. So let's start verse 16. Lachem, therefore, because I just told you that you can return to God, and God can return to you and will. Therefore, ko amar Adonai so says God, the God of all of the hosts, the God of all of the universe, Adonai, our master, my master, my God. What does he say? What does he teach? Bechol ruchovot mispeid. We have to start by showing our remorse. And how do we do that? By in all of the streets should be filled with eulogies. People should be crying over the bad that they did. Bechol chutzos and all of the scattered areas all of the outdoors um, gathering places, Yomru, people should be saying, ho, ho, whoa, whoa, how bad it is that we did. And the farmers from the fields should be calling out uh, uh, calls of mourning. And all of those who know how to cry, who know how to lead the people in cry, crying and in regret and in remorse, they should be speaking, they should be talking to the public, they should be explaining how this should be done. This is what needs to be done first. And all of the vineyards should be full of eulogies. And I'm going to translate so that I shall be able to pass among you. Therefore, and then in such a situation, then I will be able to pass among you. Because until you show remorse, there's no place for me, God, to come among you. You want me to be with you, first show remorse. And then, when you show remorse, you need to then go on a good path. And what good path should you go upon? Now, someone might say, okay, let's go to the temple. Let us show sacrifices. Let us bring more sacrifices. Let us pray. Let us cry. Let us sing to God. Let us sing hymns to God. Let us praise God. Let us do all these rituals and things that God wants. Um... I can't wait till God comes. We want to do things so that God should come. Let's do all these things that God wants. Hoy, woe, ha misavim etziom Adonai. Woe is to you that think that you want, that think that you desire the day of God to come. You think that because of these rituals, when God comes now, you're going to be all good. Everything's going to be great and wonderful. Lama zelochem yom Adonai. Why in the world would you who don't even understand what it's all about why would you want this day of God? That day of God, who choshech, is a day of darkness, viloar, it is not a day of light. For those of you that think that what God wants is your sacrifices and your rituals and your prayers, for you, the day will be darkness, not light. 
What, what will it be? You did all of that crying and you're going to be running away from the lion. God is punishing you. So you run away from the lion, but where do you run to? Not to where God wants you to go. And you end up running into a bear. And then you try to escape the bear. So you run indoors into the house. And you rest your hand on the wall thinking that, oh, now I'm safe in the house and I can rely on these walls. And in the house, what is there? There's a snake that bites you. Because why? Because when you run from one set of evil to another set of evil, a set of evil who thinks that what God wants is rituals, you're going to be running from the lion to the bear. Behold, the day of God is dark not light. It is a, a deep, deep darkness without even a glimmer of light. Why? Because I hate. To me it is disgusting, God says, your holidays. You're trying to make holidays in front of me. You're coming to celebrate Passover when, with keeping all of the rules and all of the regulations and all of the rituals. That's what you're doing. I don't want your atzeret. Your atzeret are the holidays upon which you gather in front of me, God says. I don't want those gatherings. That's not what I'm interested in. If you're going to bring to me all of these sacrifices and all of these offerings, I do not want them. I'm not even going to look at the fat animals you bring to me as sacrifices in the temple. This is not what I want. God says, remove from me all of these songs you're singing to me. All of these songs, this is not what I'm interested in. This is not what I want. This is not at all what I'm looking for. uh, uh, Remove them from me. And the singing of your your lutes, your musical instruments. I'm not going to listen. I'm not even going to hear it. But what is it that I want? It's simple, God says. I've been saying this over and over and over again, God says. Amos has told us this. Oshea has told us this. Yoel has told us this. Uh, Yeshayahu has told us this over and over again. V'yigal kamayim mishpat. Let justice flow like water. Let justice well up in your society like water. Justice, justice is what I want. I want you to build a just society. A society where poor and rich, high, you know, every class of society, up and down, right and left, everyone gets equal treatment in front of of the law and righteousness, generosity between man and another man, that should flow like a strong, flowing, gushing stream. This is what I want, God says. And if you think that ritual is what I want, you're going to be running from a lion to a bear to a snake. But if you remember that what I want is tzedek, mishpat, justice and righteousness, then you will see God's true Light. Then you will see how God can turn darkness to light. God says in verse 25, the, the, um, the, the, he gashed him by Midbar. Did I ever ask you in the wilderness for, for sacrifices and, and, and offerings? Is this, did I even ask you when you wandered for me, our boy Shona, for 40 years in the desert, Beit Yisrael? Did I ask for offerings? Now, there's many, many ways to understand this Pasuk because it seems we did receive in the Torah during the 40 years the rules of the sacrifices to be brought in the tabernacle. So what does this mean? Did I ask you for, 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 for these things in the tabernacle? I, I did ask you for them. So there's many explanations. I'm going to go through three of them. First, I'm going to mention Rashi, and it's worth reading all of these. Rashi explains very nicely that I didn't ask for, I don't want the karbonot. I don't want your sacrifices and your offerings. Rather, what I told you was, Adom ki akriv. If a man desires to bring a sacrifice, I gave you a limited place. Go ahead and bring it here and bring it for the right purposes. If it enters your heart that this is how you want to serve me, here is how you can do it. This is so, so, so similar so, so, so similar to the idea expressed by Maimonides, by the Rambam, who says that the purpose of the sacrifices was because this is the way people knew how to serve God. When people had a desire to serve God, this is the way they were taught. 
that you bring to the God a sacrifice. So God said, okay, here's a tabernacle. If you want, Adam ki akrib, kishe yirtse lehakrib, Rashi says, if when a person desires to bring, then they could bring it, right? However, in actuality, they did not bring sacrifices, as Rashi brings proof, that, that, they, that they finally, at the end, brought the, car, the, the Passover sacrifice as to state that they hadn't actually brought sacrifices during the 40 years wandering in the Midbar. This is how Rashi understands it. In a similar way, I'm going to read the Eben Ezra, who says, who, who brings some other explanations and pushes them aside, and then he says, what happened? In actuality, they only brought the Karbonot, and without going into all the detail, and he proves this through the verses, for 50 days after the tabernacle was set up, they brought the sacrifices. After that, they didn't have any animals. They were wandering in the desert. They didn't have wine. They didn't have it for 40 years until the wars against the Amorites and the Midianites that were at year 40 when they finally were conquered all those animals from the Midianites as the Torah explains in the book of Numbers. Then they had animals to bring and they restarted their Garbonos. But for 40 years they did not have that. But rather in the words of the Avanesser, I did not ask you for sacrifices during the 40 years in the, in the, in the, in the wilderness. Rather, Rak, however, Tziviti et Chem Lasos Mishpat, I commanded you to do justice. I want kindness. I want you to be good people. No zevach, not karbonos. And he brings the verse in Jeremiah, Jeremiah 7, 22, and I'll read that for you in a second. Um, uh, where Jeremiah expresses the same idea. And he says as follows. I did not tell your forefathers and I did not command them when I took them out of the land of Egypt regarding bringing sacrifices to me. That's not what I asked them back then. Okay, so this is how the Eben Ezra reads it. What I wanted was mishpat. I wanted was chesed. I wanted justice. I wanted kindness. I didn't ask you for karbanot. The Radak brings the words of the rabbis who said, of Rabbi Akiva who said that the, the karbonot were not brought by the people but were only brought by Shevet Levi, by the, Levi, the tribe of the Levites. That was another approach. So those are three approaches. Uh, the Eben Ezra's approach, the one that I mentioned, is echoed by the Malbim who also explains it in that way and, exp- uh, in that way and says that during those 40 years they did not have animals to bring. They did not have wine to bring. Rather, what was their avoda? And in the words of the Malbim, Sam, the main part of their service of God was Ayamasha Asu Mishpatutaka, was to do kindness and justice. Kimoshikasov, as it said, Yisrael. It was justice and kindness that God wanted from the Jews in the desert. That's how the Malbim study reads it, just like the Ebenezer reads it, and similar to the way Rashi reads it. This is astounding. This is absolutely astounding that Amos is telling us here that in the early days, in the days of the desert, when God first revealed himself to us, he did not want from us sacrifices. He wanted from us tzedek umishpat, justice and righteousness. But rather, what did you do now? Amos continues and completes chapter 5. Instead, you raised up Sikut, the the um, the uh, um, the um, I'm sorry. Sikut is, is talking about the stars, the, the, the constellations. Your king, as Kiyun Salmechem, and your image of Kiyun, also constellations. Kochav you made stars into your God. Asher Asitem Lechem, that you made for yourselves. You decided on your own that these are going to be your gods rather than me. And therefore, because you chose that path instead of the path of Chesed and Mishpat, you went to worship these things. Therefore, therefore, I am going to eventually exile you to faraway places, even farther away than Damascus, which was to them in those days a faraway place. Again, I want to emphasize this worshiping of the other gods is the idea, which the worshiping of, of things that, are, that, that, that have no power leads to arrogance, leads to superstition, leads directly away from God. Thank you so much for studying Amos 5b and looking forward to um, 
uh, studying together Amos chapter 6.